welcome everyone back to the Independent Investor Channel for a follow-on here with uh, one of our favorite companies. It is Vox Royalty. Uh, it's Kyle Floyd, the CEO. He's come in to give us an update on the company after an absolutely barn burner 2022 uh, and high hopes in 2023. Kyle, welcome back to the program. Please give our viewers uh, a, a kind of a rundown of what I considered an across the board home run for 2022 for Vox Royalty. Yeah, thanks, Ryan. It's always a privilege to be with you. And you're right, 2022 was a fantastic year for our business. You know, in the backdrop of very challenging times in the equity markets, rising rates, uh, outflows out of equities, um, and really compressing margins with inflationary pressures. Um, Vox withstood all of that. We had, you know, immense margin expansion, immense revenue growth. And, uh, you know, with all of that, last year we announced a dividend, we commenced trading on the NASDAQ. Uh, and then, as you noted, um, just this week, we announced record revenues that exceeded our guidance, uh, went beyond what we expected, the high end of what we expected to deliver and, and exceeded analyst expectations as well. So, yeah. you know, in a market where I think there's a lot of companies struggling, uh, facing higher costs, margin contraction, we're really the opposite right now. And these market dynamics are, are wind at the back for Vox and our business uh, and what I think will be also reflected for our shareholders. Fantastic. And mentioned shareholders. I just want to understand or disclose to the viewing audience. Um, I've become a, a share owner in Vox. I've actually owned the shares now for a couple of months now uh, and proud. I'm actually a long share owner. I will be disclosing that in the, in the description uh, below. The whole purpose of these profiling is to update the viewing audience firsthand uh, from the CEO and and. All the information is going to be provided there, VoxRoyalty.com. And like Kyle mentioned here, the uplisting uh, fall of last year to the NASDAQ, the ticker symbol there is noted uh, for, for your viewing pleasure. So uh, fantastic. I, I just want to kind of double down on the 2022. Um, you guys had some massive improvements with your guys' as operating partners as well. So I, I do want to really foot stomp how great of a year it was. I, I couldn't find a weak spot, Kyle, and you talked about exceeding expectations. That's what I saw across the board. Uh, and I think coming into 2023, I think it sets up very, very well to carry that momentum forward once we get a little bit more conducive markets here going into 2023. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, we increased our producing asset count significantly. Obviously, revenue has, has followed in line with that. We're expecting additional assets to come online uh, this year as well. So we'll continue to bump that producing asset count. That ultimately leads to revenue growth because recall, and for all your viewers out there, we're a royalty company. So we take a percentage of the revenue that mining operations generate all over the world without any exposure to the cost that it takes to get that metal out of the ground uh, and deliver that metal. So we get a pure revenue base, um, basically profit to Vox when we buy these royalties uh, and so it's been a tremendously productive 2022 with more assets coming online, more ounces uh, being discovered and de-risked. So across the portfolio, we had almost 200,000 meters drilled last year that we paid nothing for. So those meters means more ounces, more tons and more future royalty revenue for Vox Royalty Corp and our shareholders. And again, we didn't have to pay anything for that. So when we saw a market climate where costs were going up significantly on the mining companies, that wasn't impacting Vox. Um, and that being said, we have royalties over some of the best projects, a lot of those in Australia, where the operators have continued to, to execute at a very high level. And we're seeing that play out within the portfolio where the assets that we cherry picked that had great royalties over them are outperforming our expectations and therefore also delivering revenue in excess of our expectations. And so a really fantastic 2022 for us, excited about the dividend. That was a, a new development since I think we were last on air with you, Ryan, and yeah. we were excited to be able to start delivering um, tangible cash back to our shareholders. We always said, you know, we believe our business is going to be able to produce a dividend for investors. And when we do, that's going to be sustainable and something we also believe is capable of growing. So um, I expect some, you know, some positive developments around our, uh, our cash generation for shareholders to, uh, to continue. Well, I, you know, there's a lot of value attraction for me 
the the dividend was was part of it for me but you guys on the back half of 2022 have experienced some significant stock appreciation as well six months up 20 percent the last month you guys are up 11 percent just coming into 2023 we talked a little bit off air kyle about this kind of renewed sense of coming into 2023 coming off of a very poor 2022 and to your admission kind of just weathering that storm and just digging your heels in focusing on the business to set yourself up for coming into 2023 can you give us kind of kind of set the stage as a share owner in the company what to kind of expect as we unfold 2023 as we grow the portfolio we embolden those relationships that you've got with your operating partners just kind of set the stage for us going forward as we look to get on a little bit more stable footing in what has been very very volatile markets uh in the last couple of years yeah, absolutely. And you, and you touched on my shareholding and, and management shareholding in totality is approximately 15% of this company. So one of the reasons why, you know, I would attribute a lot of success for the business is that management looks out for its shareholders. It has the right people with the right capabilities and the right expertise, working hard and working disciplined to bring value to our shareholders. And so we've made some very good strategic long-term decisions for this business um, that were designed to maximize long-term shareholder value. And so a lot of those decisions were made years ago um, and are producing value now, and that will continue to be the case. So for your viewers that are out there looking for a management team um, that they can trust in the commodity sector that has the right capabilities and expertise to go out and create value. Um, yeah, I would encourage you to look at Vox and look at our company because we're out there working hard for you every single day um, and it's a privilege to do so. But as we look forward to 2023, you know, in our time as a public company, we have not had this type of wind at our back. The commodity prices that we have exposure to gold, iron ore, copper, you name it. It's it's one of the most, um, I would say, productive metal price environments that I've seen in my career. Yeah. And that is huge wind at our back. And what I'm also seeing is with the NASDAQ listing, with equities generally feeling a little bit better, you know, with the expectation that rates are going to taper off here in, in the relatively near future, um, I'm seeing a lot more interest in commodities in general, and uh, and that is starting to also flow into Vox because I do believe we're one of the best, if not the best, play in commodities right now. We're trading at less than our net asset value, synonymous with intrinsic value. Uh, we're at a meaningful discount to that valuation. And so I think 2023 is the year that our stock price and our market valuation starts to more closely reflect the fundamental valuation that we know we have. You cannot be ignored forever. I agree with you. I, it's got to be frustrating, you know, to do be, be doing everything that you can possibly do, generating those exceeding expectations. I mean, you guys exceeded your year over year from 2021 to 2022 by 160%. <laughs> How does that go unnoticed? It's got to be frustrating for you guys. But you know, I give you credit. Uh, it's been tough markets, especially in the micro cap space. You touched on something really interesting to me as a share owner. You guys are the experts. You guys, I mean, you personally have over 10 years in royalty experience. You guys have got over a billion dollars of transaction experience within your team. Kyle, I'm busy doing other things with my time. And my commodities exposure, as small as it is in the, you know, half a million dollar portfolio that I manage myself, is with you guys. It's with Vox Royalty. It's not with the high CapEx commodity space that I do cover and I'm intrigued by, but it just seems the right fit for me in that I let you guys do the hard work and I benefit as a share owner. It's easy to own your company, and I'm absolutely long your company. So if you guys want more uh, on that current position, I will be looking to add to the position for full disclaimer, um, because this is the company that, uh, like Kyle's talking about, with the 1.7 NAV right now, it's on the low end of net asset value, and it cannot be ignored forever. Um, switch gears a little bit, Kyle. I think this is going to bring home for our share owners and, and prospective um, stewards of your company came across the Segalola project, which the payback has just completed, took you guys six months to pay back a $900,000 initial investment. Frame that for a would-be stake owner in your company in what that means in how you guys can get in so quick and provide value like that with now zero overhead commitment. There's nothing maintaining that except for just 
having that provide value to the share owners now for, you know, I don't know how long that value is going forward, but it's paid off. And now as the portfolio is just one of many of your generating uh, portfolio values, can you speak a little bit that, about that on the specific Segalola payback? Yeah, I mean, that was a fantastic acquisition for us. And that was a royalty that we acquired for about 900,000 Canadian, around six million, sorry, 600,000 US. US. And ultimately, we're going to generate close to five times our invested capital amount on that. That royalty was unique in that you know, there was a seller that needed liquidity to go and, and use funds for another purpose. That one, uh, unfortunately, is capped. So we'll be capped out at about five times our invested capital amount on that. That'll happen this year. But you know, we are able to find royalties that um, have those types of properties embedded them in them in terms of return expectations. You know, for example, we also bought a graphite royalty um, a few years back and we're able to sell that for almost 10 times what we purchased it for. We see a tremendous amount of uplift in the in the value of our portfolio that's not reflected. These royalties that we bought that we, you know, we on average are are buying at 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 times their NPV as they stand now are increasing in value. So when I talk about kind of the intrinsic value of our portfolio, I think if we went to go liquidate all the royalties, it would come at a much, much higher premium than anything close to where we're trading today. There is a tremendous amount of value in the royalties that we're acquiring. We have a track record that's been validated that we are buying royalties at a fraction of their of their value because our mining engineers and our geologists are underpinned by our, our advantage with the third-party royalty database that we've talked about extensively with you, Ryan. Those two things compounding in the favor of our investors um, is what's allowing us to drive this kind of growth. We're finding value that others can't. We're systematic. We're disciplined. And that continues to compound in the favor of the business and our shareholders. Does. Absolutely. And, and I'll, I'll ask you, Kyle, and this might be a question that, uh, you know, Pascal, you know, might give us a little different answer on. But the financial position of the company here in 2023 how is it looking with regard to the debt posture? You know, what what your strategic goal? I mean, you guys were able to book, you know, top end year over years. I mean, $10 million, uh, massive improvement. So what is the capital allocation strategy as you roll out? Are you are you quick to jump on new opportunities? Or are you looking to grow? How, how on that with the capital structure? Well, the great news is we're free cash flow positive, obviously paying the dividend, something sustainable. Okay. Uh, the cash flow is growing. I expect over the medium and long term, the dividend also grows. But we're also still allocating a meaningful amount of that free cash flow to new asset acquisition opportunities, new royalty acquisition opportunities. But we have zero debt on the balance sheet, a very good cash position. And so one of the things you have to worry about in the mining industry, and it's, you know, it's just an unfortunate reality. It's so capital intensive that when you own mining companies, they, they have to raise capital almost like clockwork in a lot of ways. Um, that you know is deleterious overall to shareholders, and they're obviously diluted. And sometimes it's at the wrong times. Yeah. The cash flow that we're generating now, the no debt position of the business, gives us tremendous flexibility in terms of just continuing to build the business uh, without dilution, or if more capital is needed to do it at the right terms uh, with cost of capital that's attractive. So we're just in a very strong position, probably the strongest position that we've ever been in as a company. Yeah. Um, and that's just a product of the fundamentals continuing to get better every single day. I kind of knew it was a rhetorical question. I knew the answer you were going to give me. I know how strong you guys are financially, but I, I tell you what, when I do my due diligence on companies that I own, um, I, I fail to find a, a dark spot with you guys. I, you guys, you guys are hitting it on a lot of different, uh, a lot of different areas of the business. And I, I just want to congratulate you on that success. It's been fantastic. 2022 you guys have updated your investor slide presentation to talk about 2022 as a year of acquisitions and it, it was a year of acquisitions that uh, is worth noting can i just get your thoughts on on what you think that means for the industry as a whole and um and and what we can expect maybe going into 2023 if we can you know uh, assume that there's going to be more uh, acquisitions or or what your thought is uh, on those acquisitions in 2022 Sure. And, and Ryan, you're referencing the extensive M&A uh, activity that's happened within the royalty sector. Uh, five royalty companies were, were acquired or merged last year alone. Uh, and overall, I think that's very healthy for the industry. There's a lot of royalty companies out there that don't present anything unique for investors, nor do they have competitive advantages. Uh, and meanwhile, there are some very good royalty companies like Fox and like others that are operating, uh, that know their niche, they add value, they have good teams. 
Um, but you know, there was a lot of reason to start to have consolidation in this sector take hold. Um, I think that will continue. But from a Vox perspective, you know, we're focused on building this business for the long term. I have been consistent in that if selling was the right thing to do, there are companies with lower cost of capital out there that that would be something we would consider as shareholders and for shareholders. So if that's ever the right thing to do, um, you know, there's no entrenchment of management at Vox. We would do the right thing for shareholders. We always built the company um, to, you know, in all ways and all facets of this business to be looking out for our shareholders and uh, and do what's right there. But with where we're trading now, there is, you know, this huge disconnect between our real valuation and where we're trading at in the market. Um, and I think that's got it. You know, I'm working hard to correct that. I think 2023 is the year that you see Vox trade at, at a range that makes sense for what the value is in the business. Yeah. Um, you see that the fundamentals are delivering uh, the market, the, the tailwinds are really kicking in at a macro level. Uh, so all that combined and, and just the continued productivity of what our team is generating. I think this is the year that you see Vox, um, you know, be much more trading in line with where it should be, which is, you know, a premium on on where the stock price is to date for sure, and, and probably a very significant premium on that. Does the macro, that's the commodity market from a macro perspective, need to be strong for a Vox to survive? And the follow-on question is that there's discussions in 2023 to be in an, an elevated, um, you know, higher interest rate environment, perhaps maybe even entering into a mild recession. Can you can you talk from a macro perspective on how you see that? influencing the business obviously the positive commodities market i know gold and uranium right now lithium in the ev space is a real hot hot ticket so that's going to be obviously a tailwind for you um but can you talk about you know as 2023 unfolds if we do kind of keep these higher interest rate uh environment and maybe even do enter into a recession a little bit or a, a light recession what that could potentially mean for vox royalty uh, and your performance well, I think, you know, you got to look back at history a little bit. And one of the mm -hmm. things that we modeled out and what we've done some research on is coming out of heavy inflationary environments and in inflationary environments and in recessionary environments, when those all seem to be overlapping, uh, metal prices have been one of the shining stars in terms of price appreciation and, and price performance. So, you know, it uh, it's, it's really more of a tailwind for us than anything. And again, the start of the year, commodities are up significantly. I think Goldman Sachs has predicted is just one of the many analysts that commodities, metal commodities will be up by around 42%. Yeah. Um, so while a lot of the market's forecasting deleterious returns for equities, commodities seem to be one of the consensus picks for, for price appreciation. So really, I, I'm feeling tailwinds on our backs from a macro perspective, which might seem crazy to say, well, you know, we're, we might be on the cusp of a recession. Uh, and that's what I think makes Vox so unique. We don't need, I believe we're, we're a somewhat uncorrelated um, asset Agreed. or a contrarian asset in many respects in that we're able to find value, find great assets, great royalties uh, that are producing immense value for our shareholders day in and day out. Um, whether commodities are up, commodities are down, uh, we've always forecasted in backwardation. So that means metal prices going down. So metal prices go up, that's just leverage and icing on the cake for our business and for our shareholders. So I really view us as a somewhat uncorrelated uh, investment, if you will, but there's no doubt about it. Rising metal prices is huge wind at our back. Um, do we need that? No, we don't need that to be successful for our shareholders, but it certainly provides you know an immense amount of leverage uh, and upside that's certainly far from captured into our stock price. Fantastic. Um, the dividend yield and the NASDAQ uplisting happened fall of last year. Um, so really kind of a, a double shot of good information for you. Um, for the viewing audience that's new to it, the dividend, from my perspective, is fantastic. I'm a value investor as well as a growth investor. Um, I get both with Vox. Um, I really can't differentiate. I mean, up 11 percent already uh, just this month here. We've we've started out of the out of the year from a cannon. It's been fantastic. But being on the Nasdaq now. OK, this is a big accomplishment. Can you speak to shareholders a little bit from your perspective, Kyle, about how the environment is different, how, you know, making it off of the, the OTCQB, which does incur some scrutiny, how this changes the game, perhaps maybe even from a visibility perspective, you know, more eyes on the company is going to mean more notoriety, which is really what you guys need for Vox Royalty. 
Yeah, it certainly helps on the investor awareness and investor relations front for our business. I think that's one area for improvement um, that we can certainly make as a, as a corporation is to make sure that you know we're getting the word out that we think we're a great investment opportunity for investors out there. And you know, Ryan, one of the things you noted is you've you know you've got a lot on your plate. Um, I never, we built this company for investors like yourself and the viewers that you have, which is you want commodity exposure, but you want to know that you have the right people doing the job, getting that exposure in the right ways. I believe royalties are the best exposure you can get within the hard rock mining commodities basket of, of, of assets. We built a business around capturing that value. Uh, and it was always really with, you know, the investors that want to be investing in NASDAQ listed and, and U.S. listed securities. So. It was really exciting for us to finally be able to offer ourselves as an investment opportunity um, to the investors that I built the company for. Um, I don't, you know, it's very hard to read drill results and understand them. It's hard to read metallurgical result, results and understand mining engineering and know the background and assets when you've got a thousand other things pulling at you. So I always wanted to be in a position where we could offer investors exposure to commodities and what we thought was the best asset for exposure um, with a team that was disciplined in creating value around that for investors and doing it the right ways and built competitive advantages to do so not just now but for years to come and so we're building competitive advantages now that are going to serve our investors for three years five years and ten years down the road that while most of the space is you know essentially waiting for bankers to, to shop them the next group of royalties we're out there creating proprietary deal flow um, that'll be available to us for another decade and, and excited to do that but it was always um for really the generalist investor that doesn't have the capacity, nor do they want to have the capacity to go in and understand the details of this very esoteric industry, which is hard rock mining. Yeah. And I've been studying your company now for, for a better part of a year. And um, it's been, it's been intriguing. And it wasn't until last fall where I was like, okay, I'm, I'm out of, I'm out of reasons as I'm, I have to invest. I just have to um, finished my due diligence and really kind of understood a, a lot more about about the royal business, but but really getting to know you and your team, you guys are you guys are amazing. Um, I'm really good at my job day to day, and I, I trust that you guys are. And um, the results really speak for themselves. Kind of getting to the end of the interview, Kyle. But uh, coming into 2023, any highlights on any projects that you've got that you can speak about now that we can potentially put on the horizon, uh, and maybe expect to talk about next time you're on the channel, Kyle, as we kind of look to close this out and uh, and send you on your way with your evening. Well, look, I'll leave you with one that's really exciting for us. Sure. We have um, some assets coming online that we we've, we've noted we expect to be in production this year. One asset that's not expected to be in production this year, but is in the relatively near-term time horizon. It's called the Bowden Silver Project. It's the largest primary silver project in all of Australia. Um, they came out with some very uh, good preliminary news around permitting, and we expect them to essentially receive that final checkbox or box to be checked um, in the first quarter this year based on the operator guidance. That's the largest primary silver project in all of Australia. We have a great royalty over that asset. Um, and when, as that asset kind of clears that, uh, that hurdle, uh, it's really going to be successful for that business, that mine, and ultimately us as royalty holders as well. So that's something we're keeping our eye on. Uh, we've guided to that in, in based on operator guidance that came out already this year, uh, but excited for what happens there. We have a lot of exposure to great assets, not just what's producing now, but what's going to be coming online over 2020, the back half of this year, 2024, 2025. Um, we've got a business that is, is very strong and growing stronger by the day. Uh, so that's just one exciting asset that that we're watching and uh, i think that if your viewers look at um, they'd be pretty excited to have some exposure to yeah fantastic kyle i'm gonna give you the last word it's always a pleasure i'm gonna leave every video that i've done in the description for the viewing audience to go back and kind of help themselves chronicle the story the vox royalty story i am intimate in this story it's fantastic to watch these guys and you know when they got uplisted last fall i just about fell off the couch man they got a fist pump from me i'm just super stoked and kyle i just want to give you the last word here for your closing remarks for the shareholder base please well, Ryan, thanks, first of all, for having me back uh, on the air with you. It's always a privilege. Uh, we're working very hard for our shareholders like you. We appreciate um, the uh, the opportunity to do so. This is an interesting uh, climate to be investing in, but Vox, from the seat that I have, it's an, we have an amazing amount of tailwinds at our back. Uh, the momentum is with us. We are growing this business for the long term. 
We have unique capabilities in terms of creating value in this sector. Um, so I would encourage investors, if you're looking for an avenue to get commodity exposure, do some research on our business. Uh, we're very excited about 2023, uh, the momentum that we have, um, and it's excited to continue working hard. So appreciate everyone's time and, and learning about our business. Um, we're equally excited to keep uh, to keep building value every single day. Fantastic. On behalf of the channel here, I want to thank Kyle Floyd, CEO of Vox Royalty, traded on the NASDAQ, Vox R, and you can find more information at voxroyalty.com. Kyle, be well. Thanks, Ryan. You too.